Welcome back to Adobe Photoshop and today we're going to see what Adobe has in store for us inside of the new edition. Now we have some cool new features. We have some additions to features. We have some new beta filters inside of the neural engine and then a couple small additions. Now the first thing that we're gonna take a look at is obviously gonna be my favorite new addition to Adobe Photoshop. And that is gonna come inside of what we got last year, which is the object selection tool. The object selection tool uses artificial intelligence to identify subjects inside of your image. So now when we click this, you'll notice there's a little button up here and it's called object finder and there's a little tick box next to it we have a refresh button this is going to be a select all button and we have some settings that we can change so let's take a look and see what this does so now when i hover over this horse the artificial intelligence has already identified this as a possible subject it's already made the selection for me Come over to this horse. It's already identified this horse. Notice it hasn't made a perfect selection. This is a difficult subject to do it with because of the background. All you need to do is just in conjunction with this, use your selected mask and refine that selection inside of Photoshop. That's something you're still gonna have to do. Remember, Photoshop can't do everything for you. If you would like to know what inside of your image Photoshop has identified as a subject, you can come up here to this box and click it. When you select that box, anything overlaid in blue is gonna be your subject or your selection. If you wanna change that, you can come up here. We've got an auto refresh, meaning that Photoshop is automatically gonna hit that refresh for us each time we click on a new image, or you can manually do it, so you're gonna to have to come up there and activate this to work. We can change the color, we can add an outline, we can change the opacity, and right here, it's just saying auto show overlay. So we'll go ahead and click this box off and that's gonna hide that out. That is the new selection tool inside of Photoshop. And this is really cool. Let's say that you just wanted to brighten this horse and not this horse. It's already made that selection. To activate the selection, all you need to do is click inside of the image. It makes that selection. If you need to feather it, you can use select and mask. I can come up here, I can make an adjustment, I will slightly brighten this horse, and bam, just like that, I didn't have to go through the selection process, I'm already done. Really cool new feature. So let's check this out on a more complicated image. So here we've got a whole bunch of different items. It's going to read those, I'm gonna click on my little blue box, and just like that, it's tried to make selections of all my objects. It's not perfect, it's missed a little bit here, it missed this pen, it missed this iPhone, and it missed a little bit of the image up here. Once again, you're always gonna need to refine your selection. It's not gonna make it perfect. To take this one step further, we have something else in addition to this, and this is really cool, especially if you had like a portrait of a whole bunch of different people and you needed to individually tone their face. In this case, we're just gonna use the objects in this image. You're gonna go up here to layer, and you're gonna drop down and we've got something new. And the new thing is called mask all objects. So you can see mask all objects. And when I select that, watch what happens over here in our layers palette. Photoshop has turned all these selections into a mask and loaded them into their own folder. So right down here, you can see in this layer, we've got this shirt. And if I wanted to we'll go ahead and label these, cause this would be a complicated one, because there are a lot of objects, so I can call this shirt. And since the layer is selected, I can come up here. Let's say I don't want a green shirt, I want a different color shirt. I can just click on Hue Saturation and make a Hue Saturation adjustment. We'll hit Colorize. And now I've got this new color in the image. Since it's located inside of a folder, it's only applying it to this image. And bam, just like that, I've individually made an adjustment for this and I didn't have to go through and make selections of all these. Remember, you might have to refine the selection, but Photoshop has done most of the difficult work for us. 
So that's what's new with the object selection tool inside of Photoshop. The next thing that we're gonna go into are some neural engine filters. So I've just got this basic image here. And what we're gonna do is just use that object selection tool. We will hit select subject, or in this case, I can hit command Z. And as I hover over that, remember Photoshop has already made a selection. So let's see if it makes a better selection when I hit select subject. Yeah, it seemed to do a little bit better of a job when I clicked that. It did a much better job with the hair. I can click select and mask, and I can hit refine hair to see if it does a better job. And yeah, this is a much better selection. Didn't do it perfect down here. Remember, if you do need to refine something, you can always go in and just paint this in. You could say, hey, you should be getting this little area right here. Okay, that's a better selection. And then we're going to output this to a new layer with a mask and hit OK. So notice we've got this new layer with a mask and we're gonna take this layer and move it to a new image. So I'm just gonna grab my move tool and we're gonna go up here to, we'll do tea plantation and I'll bring her back down. We're gonna put her in this image right about there. Now, normally when I would do image like this, you can see we've got a little line here. We'll go ahead and paint that out of the mask. It's not a big deal. Um, I wouldn't have my background in focus because it looks kind of weird a lot of times. I might want to blur that out. That's not really the point of this new feature. So we're not going to spend time making a perfect selection in this image. We're just going to show you what the feature does. The one thing I do want to clean up is this little line right here because that's going to drive me nuts. So I'm going to grab my brush and remember, black hides. So we're going to start up there and click once, hold shift, go to the bottom, click again. It draws a straight line just like that. That little lines out. So that looks a whole lot better. Now, the only problem with this new feature is it does not work with your mask. So we need to remove the mask for this new feature to work. The way you're going to do that is go ahead and right click. And then what we're going to do is come down here to apply layer mask and that's going to apply it and just give us a translucent background in a single image. Now we can apply the new feature. So we're going to go up here to filter and drop down to neural filters. We'll give a second. It's going to loan. So we're going to go down here and this is one of the new beta filters inside of the neural engine. And we're going to go down to harmonization and we're going to turn that on. And Photoshop's gonna automatically recognize and try to blend these two images. Before you had to go in and kind of pick the colors and add them, because notice they kind of have a cool and a warm back here and she's a completely different color. And it doesn't blend and look good. The next step is to go up here to select a layer and we wanna say, hey, we wanna blend her with the background layer. And Photoshop's automatically gonna run as you can see and it's gonna change and try to colorize and change the tone of her to match the background. Now, this is one of the problems that you're gonna run into in Photoshop. And a lot of people think you can just take any image and make it blend perfect. Well, it's not really true. A lot of it is dependent on how the images were photographed. You can see we have sort of a moody picture here that's backlit, and then we have her as a flat, even light because she's in a flat, even light, it's never gonna blend perfectly. We would really want more of a modeled light on a subject like this to get it to work right. Now you can see it's done some funky things with her skin tones. It's, it's darkened her because it's just recognizing the subject. Look, it doesn't know if this is a person and chicken and background or what it is. We can lower that strength and we, that will apply less of this filter on her. We could brighten this up so she becomes brighter. And we can also come in here and refine the colors. If we wanted it to be a little bit more blue, we could come in here and add some blue to this image to make her start to match more with the blue aspect or area of the image versus the sky, which is more of this warm color. Once you've made the adjustments and you're happy with what you have, you can come down here. I would either do this as the new layer or a small filter. In this case, we'll just do a new layer and hit OK. And you'll see that this will open up. And now we have the colorized version of her up here. 
just like anything before, remember, this is just a layer. We can alter this layer by reducing the opacity or coming in and actually doing a gradient and adding more colorization to the image. If it's not perfect, you can still fiddle with it and make it even better. So let's take a look at this same image and we're gonna move it to a new photo. Remember, if you have flat lighting on your subject, you need to make sure you have flat lighting in your image. If you have modeled lighting in the background, you need to make sure your the lighting or the way the shadows fall on your subject is very similar. So we'll just move her down, put her in just like that. Once again, we have to remove the mask. So I'm gonna right click on the mask and put apply layer mask. Then we're gonna come up here and we're gonna to go to neural filters. We're gonna click on harmonization and this works for anything. You don't have to use people, any object. We'll select the background layer and we'll let it run its course and see what it does and it should come in here and slightly colorize her. Now, once again, it's picked these warm colors and applied them to her and it made her skin look really unnatural. So we're gonna go ahead and reduce the strength of this a little bit and we can increase some brightness a little bit. Re-render and see if that looks better. Okay, the brightness is too much, it didn't work. And that's looking a whole lot better. So you can see it's kind of colorized this image here. And I could just say, I want to output this as a new layer. I'm going to come in here. I'm actually going to blur this background layer a little bit. So we're going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Remember in photography, we have depth of field. So if we did take an image and we focused on our subject like this, yeah, normally the background would be blurred out a little bit. You can see we've got a little bit of a halo around their subject. That's easy. We can remove that. But just like that, Photoshop's done a pretty good job of blending it in. Remember, this is a beta filter, so they will be improving this feature as time goes along. So the next new feature is also a neural engine filter. So notice that I have this picture here. We have this beautiful landscape shot in the mountain. We're gonna go up the filter, drop back down to neural filters. And now we're gonna take a look at landscape mixer. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. Look, the first time you do it, you're gonna to have to download this one. And it's got a whole bunch of images up here. What you'll do is you look up here, notice we've got something with snow, we've got a really warm sunset, all these different looks on landscapes. And we can take these looks and apply them to this image. I'm gonna click on this, and it's gonna use artificial intelligence to take this look and apply it to this image. And just like that, you can tell that it has applied this colorization to this image. One of the issues that I found when doing this, and I'm gonna hit uh, cancel for right now, is you'll notice that this is perfectly tack sharp and looks really good in this image. We're gonna come up here to filter and go back down to the neural engine. I'm gonna run that same filter again. Turn on landscape mixer, we'll scroll down. We're gonna click at this and we'll give it a second to run through. And what I want you to see is look at the image quality right here, how it changes. Well, it's done a good job. It's applied the filter. We can once again come in here and change the strength or change these dials to adjust how this looks. But look right down here. It's gotten all out of focus and mucky. So let's take a look at that. We're going to do this as a new layer. We're going to hit OK. And now when we come into Photoshop, I'm going to turn this on and off. And what I want you to do is look at this area in here to see what it's done. We're gonna turn this on and off. So this is on and that's on and off. It's almost made it into like an illustrative type painting. The problem with this filter is it really reduces the image quality that we see here. Remember, this is just a beta filter and it's something that I think that they'll work on. As far as this filter, it does work, but it dramatically reduces the image quality that you have. So not a huge fan of it at this point. It does work. We'll turn this off here. I'll go back to this other one and, and we'll pick a different filter just to see what it looks like. We'll go to neural filter, turn on landscape mixer. We'll try to make this look all snowy here. It did do a good job of doing it, but once again, even the background and everywhere, it's totally reducing the image quality. 
This is more of an illustrative or painterly type effect. I wouldn't consider this a realistic photo like this image was before. Not something bad, but just something to keep in mind when using this new neural filter. So another feature inside Photoshop that's new is we're gonna take this image and we're gonna be able to now share this image with other people and allow them to make comments on this photo. So we'll take this image, we'll go up here to window and we're gonna drop down to comments, which is new. And what this is saying, it's saying save to the Creative Cloud because to share, we need to put this image in our cloud. I'm gonna hit continue and you can see I have a couple images that I've used for other tutorials. I can save this as any file that I'd want. We're just gonna leave it at its default and I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. What it's doing is basically taking this file and uploading it to the cloud. Once it's done uploading this image to the cloud, we're gonna have access to it and it's gonna allow us to share with other people. Now, once the image has been uploaded, notice that we have a share button. So I can click on here and hit share and I can decide to send this to whoever I want. So I could come up here and add some other people and then I can copy the link and send that to them. And they will be able to comment in here just like I can. So I could put, does this work? For you, you, question mark, and I can hit submit. It could take a second and notice it's posted it here. And then there's gonna be a reply where they could reply. And that way one person can be sitting in New York City, the other in California. And live, you can share this and make comments on the image as you work with it. So really cool new feature if you're working with people who are not at the same location as you are. Another new feature is the new oil paint feature. And look, this isn't new, they just have improved it. I'll quickly show you where this is located and how it works. So we're gonna hit Command J just to duplicate it so you can see what it's doing. You're gonna come up to Filter, go down to Stylize and go to Oil Paint. It's gonna bring up this new dialog box. And you can see you can adjust this. If you wanna see the previews in real time, I can click Real Time Preview to see what it's looking like that way as I make my adjustments, I can see on the whole image how it looks. I could change any of my sliders, the lighting angle, the shine. And once I'm happy with the way it looks, I can go ahead and hit okay. It's much faster. And according to Photoshop, they've improved the way it works. That is the new oil paint feature. Now, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and delete that. And I'm gonna fill this layer, which is shift delete on a Mac. And I'm gonna make it white. And we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. Another new item that Adobe claims has been improved is the gradient. So I'm gonna come down here and pick this gradient. And I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a line from here to here so we can make a simple gradient. And you can see, bam, just like that, it's created that. Now what they've added that's new is this method. So right now we are on linear. So classic was the original way that this worked. And it just has to do with the way the colors are applied. You'll notice in the old classic, it's sort of a little bit gray here in the transition area. So we have a new linear method, which looks more lifelike or how the eye would actually see it in real time. So you can see it's changing the way it looks. And then under perceptual, it's using a perceptual method to change it a little bit. It's at a little more gray than the linear method. I understand that on a video, it can be very difficult to see those changes. What I can tell you, if you really wanna see a good example, is to go to Adobe and type in new features for Photoshop for 2022. And they have three little pictures that shows the difference in the gradient tool and what they look like and how you apply them. It is very subtle. It's gonna be difficult for you visually just looking at a big image like this to tell the difference, but there is a slight change in how it works. That is the new gradient tool inside of Adobe Photoshop. Now the export function has changed, so we can go ahead and here to apply that, go to file, down to export, and export has changed, but we can do export as, and the change here is supposedly this is much faster than it used to be. The last improvement, I'm not gonna show it because I'm not a graphic designer and I don't work in Illustrator. It is a pretty cool feature. Basically, you can 
copy layers inside of Adobe Illustrator. And then when you paste them on a document inside of Photoshop, it saves them as vector layers. So instead of just being one file, you'll get all the layers that were used when you created that Illustrator file. So that's new. Not gonna demonstrate it because I don't have any vector files like that. Well, that's it for all the cool new features inside of Adobe Photoshop 2022. Don't forget about the new Facebook group. I run into a lot of issues where people ask questions or complicated questions, and I have a difficult time answering them because I cannot see the image. So a lot of times if you can post your image on the Facebook group, it makes it a lot easier for me to reply and give you a more intelligent reply on the fix or solution for that image. If you have any comments or questions, you can always still leave them below and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>